from November of 2003 on the website ImmaculateHeart.com, a Catholic Christian resource site, this claim was made. Most Christians assume that Sunday is the biblically approved day of worship. The Roman Catholic Church protests that it transferred Christian worship from the biblical Sabbath Saturday to Sunday and that to try to argue that the change was made in the Bible is both dishonest and a denial of Catholic authority. If Protestantism wants to base its teachings only on the Bible, it should worship on Saturday. And on the same page, there was this statement. Over 100 years ago, the Catholic Mirror ran a series of articles discussing the right of the Protestant churches to worship on Sunday. The article stressed that unless one was willing to accept the authority of the Catholic Church to designate the day of worship, the Christian should observe Saturday. When Daniel spoke of a church-state system that would speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change the times and the law, he was speaking of the work of deception against the truth of God as revealed in his word. The Bible is not the boasted claim of the Roman Catholic Church that it transferred Christian worship from the biblical Sabbath Saturday to Sunday, as well as the attempt to universally change the seventh day of the weekly cycle from Sabbath to Sunday, a most striking fulfillment of the think to change God's time and law prophecy? And should it be any wonder that the same religious system that has claimed that it has the authority to change God's holy day of worship from Sabbath to Sunday would also seek to physically change the seventh day of the week from Sabbath to Sunday? When commenting about the great deceptions that would be brought upon the world and more specifically his followers, Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you and insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect so as deception increases in this world it is the duty of god's followers to unmask it using the bible as their light and guide and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The false prophet acted as a deceiver by mixing in error while at the same time appearing and claiming to speak the truth of God. A true prophet must always teach only the truth as clearly shown in God's word. The Bible says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Though we are told that the entire earth is to be brought under the great power of deception, who is the ultimate target? And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The true church or followers of God are identified as walking in or obedient to all of the commandments of God, and they also have the testimony of Jesus Christ as a result of experiencing a faithful, loving relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. With extremely powerful deception going on all around us, the only way to not be deceived is to know the truth for ourselves and to walk in it. And what is the embodiment of truth as well as the source of all truth? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Remember that just like the virus that eventually destroys our computer, the New World Order in the weekly cycle is subtly destroying people's discernment of and love for the truth. And the more the love for truth has been destroyed from the mind, the more the mind itself becomes a destroyer. So how important is the truth? 
again Jesus says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Historically, the closer any society or religion has followed the principles of God's truth as revealed in the Bible, the more it has enjoyed freedom and prosperity for both the individual and the nation. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And knowing God, the Father, and his Son, Jesus Christ, is what the seventh day Sabbath is all about. So that is why those who truly want to please and follow God should always remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Now God looked at all his creation. It was perfect in every way. God smiled and said, Ah, oh, that pleases me. I like everything I've made. On the seventh day, God rested from the great work he had done. God blessed the seventh day and said, This Sabbath day shall be a holy day. Down through the years, God's people have rested on the Sabbath day. They rested and they worshiped God, the great and wise creator. How important is the truth to you?